I'm Matt Skinner, wine writer, wine judge, consultant, and plum ambassador. And we're here in downtown sunny Melbourne, and we're on the way to my office. So welcome to my world. This is where I do my day-to-day. So that involves lots of tasting. So every Monday we're in here and we're tasting uh, around about 100 wines or thereabouts. And that sort of fuels... Uh, the, the basis of what makes up my column. So for Sunday Life uh, in The Age and the Sydney Morning Herald, um, for BBC Good Food magazine, for Gourmet Traveller Wine and for Home Beautiful, I consult to a couple of different restaurant groups, uh, most importantly the Van Handel Group here in Melbourne. Um, we have Stoke House, Cutler & Co, Com, Ladro, a couple of cafes as well. I might be biased, but I think if you took a little bit of um, Paris' style, New York sophistication. Um, I think if you took a little bit of Barcelona's kind of artistic flair and you sort of combined that all in a city, say the size of San Francisco, you'd work you'd, with, a, with an independence all of its own. You'd end up with something like Melbourne. I remember growing up at school um, in the 80s and sort of we'd sit around in the schoolyard and every kid's lunchbox was different. You know, you'd have kids that had like Vegemite sandwiches and a piece of fruit. You'd have other kids that were sort of having, you know, prosciutto and a wedge of parmesan cheese and other kids having moussaka. The, the thing that made this city special was its people. And I think that's played a, an enormous part in its development as one of the world's preeminent food and wine destinations. You know, I guess in my 17 years in wine, I've, um, I've, I've spent half that time in retail, so I've sold a lot of wine-specific glassware. Um, I spent the other half of that time as a sommelier, working in different restaurants um, around the world, and I've broken my fair share of it as well. So I probably know a fair bit about it. I certainly know the importance um, of a decent glass, you know, and the impact that that will make on, on, on wine. You know, I was, I was amazed that when I did get the brief from Plum that, you know, A, there was only five shapes in the range, which was genius. There wasn't, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different shapes. Um, they were manufactured three different ways, so easy to understand. And most importantly, I didn't need to have been to university in, under- in order to understand how they work. And I love the fact that it was something that was born out of Melbourne. You know, this was a, an idea put together by a team in Melbourne. Um, it was all about simplicity, practicality and affordability. That was it. And, you know... Um, I, I spend my life talking to people about wine and, and communicating uh, all things wine and one thing I, I always urge people to do is to get themselves a decent set of glasses because that makes all the difference to the experience and that's what these do. Just straight up simple design, um, it's got some width, a lot of sparkling glass is quite narrow which sort of stops you from being able to smell. The most important thing here, the shape and the fact that not too wide, so you can still see um, wine's beading nicely away in the glass there, but again, not too narrow, so plenty of room in there for you to be able to kind of swirl what's in the glass. Uh, if aromatic whites are your things, grape varieties like Sauvignon Blanc, Riesling, Pinot Grigio, then this is your glass. Uh, the great thing about this glass, not too broad, it's nice and narrow, it's got a really sort of lovely um, wide bowl at the top, which allows all those lovely aromatics to be caught and focused before you have a smell. White B, okay, so we're getting bigger here and obviously this is for full, fuller body white. So great varieties like um, Chardonnay, most importantly, which is what I've got in the glass here. Um, Viognier, Pinot Gris, Gewürztraminer, some wines, wines that have got oomph and weight behind them. That's where this glass works really well. It's wide, so straight away it allows the wines that have got, you know, huge aromatics and a lot of presence to really open up and show their best. I love this glass. It's big, it's for full body reds. Things like Cabernet, Shiraz, Grenache, Merlot, um, Zinfandel, anything that's got some weight and muscle. Uh, that's where this glass works beautifully well. It's got a naturally nice wide bowl. It's sort of long, it's tapered at the top and it means that all those beautiful fruit smells, the non-fruit smells that are in there as well, get a chance to be sort of um, released and sort of and, and caught within that bowl. Um, great for full body reds. Perfect for lighter reds, and in this case, Pinot. Really, really good for Pinot. Um, great with Tempranillo as well, and particularly Nebbiolo from right up in the northwest of Italy. It delivers the wine straight to the center of your mouth. Perfect to give you a really lovely indi- indication of the wine's texture and flavor. Now, this can go either way. Um, perfect thing about this is if you're doing a fair bit of tasting, we use these uh, every Monday in our office. Uh, they've got a lovely big wide base on them so they're great for being able to hold and swirl whatever's inside them. 
really great all-purpose shape. It's got some width um, in the bowl. It allows you to kind of fill it, you know, a third of the way and still plenty of room to sort of release aroma, whether that be light aromatic whites or big full-bodied reds. Uh, as in this case, perfect for tasting and a great all-purpose glass. Light aromatic whites, full-bodied whites, rosé, lighter reds and full-bodied reds too. Now I'm allowed to say this. This is my favourite glass in the range. It's a stemless glass, but I use this glass more than any other. Uh, I use it for white wine, red wine, rosé, beer, gin and tonics, dessert. It's just, it's great for all of those things. And obviously still, I mean, you can have some serious wine in there. Give it a swirl and it's, it's perfect. That's that for another day's tasting.